The previous video showed how easy it is to program flash devices from Universal Scan given a previously saved configuration. This video clip walks you through the setup operations so you can see how easy it is to configure the flash programming tool. We're also using a much larger flash device this time so you can see how that impacts programming time. This example has two 16-bit 8 megabyte Intel PROMs in parallel to form a 32-bit data bus. Let's bring up the PROM programmer toolbar and see how we configure this. Once again we come up with the PROM programmer toolbar, hit the setup button and it brings us into this dialog where you get to specify all the parameters. Let's load a previously saved configuration just to save us some typing and it fills in all the blanks for us. This first page of the dialog is where you specify the data file you want to put into the PROM. I'm going to change that and I'm going to go find something a little bit bigger. I've created something recently so let me sort on date. Let's grab this file here and it's 10k bytes long. That would be a good example for us. You see that our data bus is uh, 32 bits wide. The maximum width our PROM can handle is 16 bits and we're using that PROM in a 16-bit mode. If we're using it in an 8-bit mode, we could select that. My PROM is at base address 0, and I want Universal Scan to automatically X-test the required devices and automatically bypass the unused devices. The second page is where you specify the address and data buses and the control signals. If you don't want Universal Scan to generate any of the control signals, you can simply click on these boxes and that will tell Universal Scan not to look for them. Adding signals is easy. You just pick the signal you want to add, which device you want to add it to, the pin you're going to hook it up to, and any notes you might want to add to it, and hit Add, and it adds it to the list. To change something, let's change the note on the chip enable. The chip enable is currently hooked up to this device on pin J3. It's active low, and if I wanted to change the note, I could do that. Uh, I'm not really going to change it here. And hit Change, and that would change the note for me. That's all there is to it. The Bank Select page is where you specify any signals that you would like for Universal Scan to drive as a function of address. This would typically be used to generate bank selects, but you can also use it to trigger an external test setup when programming is done. In this example, we broke the address space up into four parts, with each driving a different LED on the board. This gives us an onboard indication of the status of the programming operation. To add a definition, you just specify the device, the pin, the starting address, ending address, what value you want that pin to be during that address, any notes, and hit Add, and you're done. The Static Pins page is where you specify any signals that you want to be held at a certain value during the PROM programming process. In this case, uh, there are a number of chip selects that we have to set up, uh, the byte control signal on the PROM, the reset on the PROM, and the VPEN signal on the PROM are all things I want to be held at specific values during the programming process. Notice that for each signal, I'm also specifying what I want the tri-state on that output buffer to be doing. Don't forget those. This page would normally be used to drive enables to other devices on the bus to ensure they're disabled during programming. In this example, we're driving PROM control signals only. I don't have anything else on the bus. The options page allows us to control the flow of the programming. We can turn off all those verbose messages we saw earlier in the status dialog. We can choose to erase before programming or not. We can choose to verify the data after programming. And we can modify the address offsets. Right now we're telling it to put the data at the address specified in the file, although we can add an offset to the address if we want to. We can subtract an offset, or we can just ignore the addresses entirely and put the data at a specific place in memory. The Algorithms page allows you to tweak the programming operations to speed up programming and to control the flow of the programming operation. For example, you can choose to reset the JTAG chain before programming, or not if you want to. You can choose to use the built-in CFI information in a device if it's there. Uh, you can modify the AMD algorithms. We have some general algorithm setup things. For instance, you can choose to ignore the address setup time and uh, save a little bit of programming time there. With all these options set up, we just hit the OK button. And the first thing I'm going to do is hit the Info button and see if Universal Scan can find the prompts. Sure enough, Universal Scan prints out all the options that we selected, 
so we can see how what we did. And then it goes and tries to find the prom. It went looking for a CFI device and it found it. In fact, it found this particular device. This is our 8 megabyte prom. Uh, the bus interface type tells us all about the inf information about the proms. And notice there's two columns of numbers here, one for each of the proms. Given that Universal Scan could identify the proms, we simply hit the program button. And Universal Scan goes to erase the device. Now this is an 8 megabyte device, so it's going to take about a minute to program. So I'm going to pause the video until that's about done. Okay, erase is about to finish up. There it went. And now we begin programming. Again, I'm going to pause the video while this occurs. We're programming uh, 10k bytes of information into this prompt, so it's going to take a little while. Okay, the prompt programming operation is about finished. It looks like the erase operation took 57 seconds. The program operation took 158 seconds. Let me verify the device. I'll pause while this is running. Okay, and verify is about finished. The verify operation took 40 seconds. Now that we're done with that, we simply hit the view button. Universal Scan pulls that information out 32 bits at a time, and sure enough, there's the data file that we put into the prom. This video clip quickly reviewed the operations for setting up a programming operation. You also got a taste for one of the issues associated with programming proms via boundary scan. It's slow. For more details, download the free trial and take a look through the manual. In summary, programming a prom via Universal Scan's Flash Programmer is quick and simple. You just fill in the blanks, hit program, and away you go.